EBS Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, inside virtual reality with the Meta Quest 3 headset. But first, the dog-fox hybrid, or dog-zim, a strange creature scientists believe to be the first such crossbreed of its kind. It's a pampas fox, so it's not the standard red fox that we would see in the UK, for example. The presumption is that this is a result of a dog and a pampas fox getting together. That's Dr Jacqueline Boyd, a senior lecturer and canine science expert at Nottingham Trent University. It's particularly unique because we recognise the domestic dog is one species and we recognise this pampas fox is another they're distinct species and they're genetically distinct enough. They're very different compared to dogs and grey wolves, for example. We know that dogs and grey wolves can actually hybridise quite easily because genetically they're much closer in terms of their evolutionary ancestry, whereas the dog and this pampas fox are a little bit more divergent. Now mystery surrounds the death of the black clearly fox-looking animal, which was being looked after as a stray at a Brazil conservation centre, and DNA testing subsequently found something very interesting. This particular case has really attracted a lot of attention because it's been explored genetically. They've looked at the chromosome number, they've looked at what's gone on in terms of the mitochondrial inheritance, and that's actually told us an awful lot more about what's actually happened here, and it's confirmed definitively that it is actually a dog fox hybrid. Dr Boyd says there's also an important conservation lesson from the incident so humans are more aware of interactions between domestic pets and wild animals but time will tell if there's more dog foxes out there. Dr Boyd examined the research by Brazil's Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul for academic news analysis site The Conversation. Next with much fanfare, the latest virtual reality headset from Meta, called the Quest 3, has been unveiled, and whilst it's not cheap, starting at nearly £500, it offers a powerful portal into the immersive digital universe. So you put on this headset, it's about half a kilo, so quite heavy, but actually quite comfortable, and immediately what you see is a kind of digital rendering of the real world outside, so there are cameras on the outside of the headset, um, so you're in this kind of digital version of the real world. That's Evening Standard Arts and Culture writer Vicky Jessup. Vicky spent an hour and a half testing out the new headset and we wanted to know how the experience felt. I don't think you feel cut off from the real world in a problematic way with the Quest 3 because the beauty of this bit of kit is the two cameras on the front of the headset which means that it feeds back a digital image of the outside world to your screen which lets you swap between virtual reality and mixed reality thereby avoiding the awkward necessity of taking off your goggles every time you want to look at something outside. Now... A report by the advocacy group Common Sense Media has found that some children can receive up to nearly 5,000 alerts every day on their smartphone. It was discovered in a study monitoring weekly smartphone use of youngsters aged 11 to 17 years old, which found the frequency of alerts ranged from a few hundred to over 4,500 notifications. The pings primarily came from social media apps, notably Snapchat, Discord and Instagram. Research found about a quarter of alerts popped up during school hours, with about 5% more occurring between midnight and 5am on school nights. Next. Scientists at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are warning a parasitic brainworm that can be ingested through contaminated produce is making its way through the southeastern United States. The invasive parasite known as rat's lungworm, after where it hatches, can spread to the brain and spinal cord through eating contaminated foods, including fresh produce and snails. While the parasite cannot reproduce inside humans, it can cause severe symptoms in rare cases, including terrible inflammation, vomiting and nausea. Finally, the retro dream of the future, as the Civil Aviation Authority reckons we're on the brink of a boom in flying taxis. CAA Chairman Sir Stephen Hillier is calling for a global common standard for flying taxis ahead of greater adoption of the airborne vehicles. A number of startups are currently racing to make the dream of urban air mobility a reality. British firms involved in the race for airborne cars include Bristol's Vertical Aerospace, which is working on a fleet of electrical, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science, plus what it sounds like to skydive from nearly seven miles up in the clouds. Why not hit follow in the meantime? Give us a rating. 
Welcome back. Research by the University of Sydney's Charles Perkins Centre suggests everyday activities such as walking up the stairs or playing with children could help lower the risk of heart attack, stroke or even premature death. Scientists found that although short bouts of incidental activity are good for you, how long you do it for and how vigorously makes a difference. They say the findings make physical activity much more accessible to people who are unwilling or unable to take part in structured exercise. And finally... A team of daredevils has set a world record for the highest high altitude low opening jump after descending from a balloon nearly seven miles up over New Mexico. The ride down the formation is pretty much as we thought it was going to be coming out of the balloon. We got that stabilized. Brandon and Chris did a great job of that and then the other guys flew to us and we got hooked up. That's Larry Connor, 73-year-old billionaire businessman who last year visited the International Space Station as a private astronaut. He's part of the Alpha 5 team involved in the jump, which includes four U.S. Air Force Special Warfare Pararescue Specialists and his team member, Rob Dieguez. I mean, being up there, being at 36, almost 37,000 feet and I mean, you can almost see the curvature of the Earth. It's beautiful. Most beautiful jump I've ever done. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast for the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Evening Standard here in London. And we'll be back on Monday at 1pm. See you then.